Okay, here we're going to look at surface area involving prisms or cylinders. And in this example, we've got this, this mailbox structure. And the company's going to manufacture this. And you can see that it's got a, a half cylinder on, on, on the top there. And then, of course, just a sort of a rectangular box shape on the bottom. Notice the company's going to make 1,343 of these mailboxes this week. Each mailbox has the dimensions shown here. How many square meters of aluminum are needed to make all 1,343? And then it says in your calculations we need to use 3.14 for pi. Now, here's something to be aware of. Think about uh, this being like, well, it's an aluminum mailbox, or we can unfold it. If we were to unfold this, what, what would it look like? Well, the box part, we've got the ends here, we've got the bottom, and then we have two sides, right? So if we look straight down on the bottom, and, well, let's do it this way, be a little neater. Right? So the bottom's going to be sort of a shape like that. And then the ends, if we folded those ends down, we're going to have a couple of those shapes, right? And that's not exactly perfect, but you get the idea, hopefully. And then the sides, same sort of thing. They're going to be rectangles, aren't they? So to find the surface area of each of these is really pretty easy, right? Here's the bottom, here's the side one and side two, and then this we could call end one and end, oops, end two. And we can look at those dimensions of each. We know that the ends are the same size, the sides are both the same size, and then the bottom. So we calculate the surface area of the box part, and then we've got the top. So if we unfolded the top, what we would have are a couple of half circles like this, and then we would have the whole top part, which is going to be a rectangle. And the interesting thing is that this distance of the rectangle, this length, is going to be half the circumference of this part, right? Because that this distance right here, let me draw it in red, this distance right here has to match this distance, right? Because they're the same line right up here. Okay, so to calculate that, that's where the pi comes in because we're going to have to use the, um, portion, the equation for area of a circle. So we could say this is the top, and then we could say this is, um, I don't know, circle one and circle two. You know, we can call them whatever we want. So basically, we have to calculate the surface area of each of these parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight parts, and we have to add them all up. That's how we calculate that surface area. So let's start with the bottom. The bottom, we know it's 0.19 by 0.57, right? So it's 0.19 times 0.57. And then end 1 is going to equal end 2, and that's going to be the length times the width of those. And if we look here, this is 0.19. It's the same right here. And then how tall is that end? It's 0.29 right here. So it's going to be 0.19 times 0.29. And then I'm just going to add, multiply by 2, because there's two of them. So I'm going to cross these off as I finish. Okay, and then the same for the side 1 is equal to side 2. And we know that these sides are 0.29 high and 0.57 
long. So we can multiply 0.29 times 0.57 and then multiply that times 2. Right, so there's those five parts. Now we have this top. And the top length right here is 0.57. And then this length, highlighted in red, is going to be one half the circumference of this circle, right? Circumference is 2 pi r. What's the radius? And, and actually, this is going to be half of it, right? So the first, we have to figure out the radius. If the diameter right here, let me do this in green so you can see, this distance right here is the same as this distance. That's the diameter, and it's 0.19. So this width is going to be half of the 2 pi r. 2 pi, we have to use 3.14. And the radius is half of 0.19. So it's going to be 0.19 over 2. And that's just this width. We still have to multiply it by this 0.57 over here. Okay, so if we cross cancel here, we get just 1. So if we look at the area of the top, we can say that's 0.57, which is this length, times 3.14 times 0 0.1, 0.19 over 2. Okay, and that takes care of the top. Then if we look at C1, the, you know, the, the half circle here, it's going to be the same as C2. And we know that the surface area of a circle is pi r squared, right? And if we take these two together, it makes a whole circle. So we could just say, oh, well, it's just going to be 3.14, which is pi, times the radius squared, which again is that 0.19 over 2 squared. Right? So we can cross those off. And what do you know? We've got all the parts. All we have to do is do these calculations and add them up. So let's do that now. So if we multiply 0.19 by 0.57, we get 0 0.1083. And I recommend that you once you get this answer, then you just push the memory plus button or the, the store in memory. Then we calculate the next one. That's going to be 0 0.1102. And if you push memory plus for this one, it'll add these two together. So the memory is just like a, it's a bank. When you put memory plus, then it like plunks that into the bank. And then this one, it'll plunk into the bank. So then we do the next one. That's going to be 0 0.3306. The top is going to be, oh, and we push memory plus, of course. Then we get 0 0.170031, memory plus. And then here, we get 0 0.028385, memory plus. Then when we add that up, we get a point, point 0.74747695. That's for one mailbox, right? we have 1,343 mailboxes. So we have to multiply this by 1,343. And we get our final answer of 1,000, oops, 1,004 meters squared. 
So the tricky thing here is just keeping track of all the parts. I highly recommend that you that you draw out your what what are often called nets, like the unfolding all the different parts. And then you just go through and you calculate the surface area for each part carefully. Add them all up, multiply by however many pieces or mailboxes in this case, and then get your final answer. Alrighty, have fun.